Hello and welcome to part four, the final part of our journey through Pokemon Red and Blue to complete our living Pokedex and catch every single Pokemon. We have caught um, every Pokemon in Red version and right now we are starting our final journey, final stretch. We're starting the cleanup in uh, our main version, our main save file in Pokemon Blue. Uh, every Pokemon we need to catch is available to us. Every other Pokemon we've caught. And so we're gonna start with evolving two Pokemons using Moonstones. During my first time through the game, I actually picked up four Moonstones because there are four Pokemons to evolve using Moonstones. I will also evolve my Eevee uh, as that I renamed Arya into Vaporeon. Uh, the reason for that is Vaporeon is my favorite Pokemon and I want to use uh, use it as a sidekick. I want it to be my sidekick and it's completely unnecessary. But uh, you know that's that's the game part. That's the part I want to do for fun, you know. Uh, not that catching every Pokemon wasn't fun, but you know I wanted to add a little bit of a personality to it. And uh, now we can. Now that we have a bunch of Pokemon, uh, different Pokemons, we have at least seventy. Uh, we have seventy-four different kinds. We can get. We can go and get the multi exp. That's because, and the reason we get the multi exp is uh, for something very simple yet very. Very time-consuming. The grind. That's right. We have the XP all. It's not the multi XP in Gen One. It's XP all because it doesn't work the same way. Now, if you look at the time here, we are ten hour, ten hours and five minutes in, and that's the beginning of the end. We start the show with a showstopper. The big grind. That's right. You may have noticed that we have a lot more Pokemon we have as opposed to Pokemon that are part of our living Pokedex. Uh, that's because we have a lot of unevolved Pokemon that we need to evolve, and it's only gonna get worse. We're, on, we're only gonna catch more and more Pokemon, which are gonna require some grinding to level up. So to make sure we don't have all, like the entire grind in one session, I actually start with um, grinding the Elite Four, which is the best way to get XP, and also money, which is a thing that I didn't really talk about. But uh, with all the trades I had to do between red and blue, I had to buy a lot of balls. And so at that point, I don't have any money. So we're going to need money, a lot of money, you'll see why. And we're going to need to evolve a lot of Pokemon. And we start right now. I'm only going to show you, thankfully, I'll spare you the full grind. Um, I'll only show you the evolutions. As you can see, these ones go by pretty quickly. Um, but let me tell you, I spent several hours grinding here. So we, we get the three starters there. Um, and, and another reason why I want to start the grind right now, it, it is just to spread it out. And also because, you know, it's kind of mindless. After all the strategy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to show you all the evolutions. And yeah, I'm skipping a lot of footage here, let me tell you. Um, after all the, the, the thinking, I just wanted something kind of mindless. Spend a few hours, just go mindlessly through the Elite Four. And that's why I wanted a big Pokemon, right? Like really one really strong Pokemon that could solo the entire Elite Four. Um, and the reason for that is the, mul the multi exp or the XP all, the way it works in Gen 1, is it just shares the XP with everybody. So you, you don't put it into one Pokemon and then that Pokemon gets all the XP. Every Pokemon gets the XP. So you kind of have to ev uh, evolve or at least get XP to five other Pokemons at once. Uh, which is why you saw uh, all three th starters evolved at the same time. Now, another reason. As you see, like, I have a lot of money now. Well, I had, because uh, 
I spent five hours grinding, as you can see here. I had a lot of money. Unfortunately, I'm gonna spend the next ten minutes exchanging this money for coins. Yeah, that's also the extra secret reason why I uh, I did uh, all this. And yeah, uh, this is uh, I sped it up, but I think I spent like ten minutes, ten real minutes, just yep, just getting uh, exchanging coins for money. Uh, and the thing is, yeah, I needed a lot of money to buy a lot of balls, of course, but also to get six thousand five hundred coins. As you, yeah, you can check. Ten minutes, eleven minutes. It is, uh, it was kind of dumb. <laughs> but with all these coins, we can get a Porygon. You know, part of it's part of the grind. Um, thankfully, in blue version, it's only 6,500 coins, as opposed to 9,999 in red version. <sighs> Which, uh... I, I didn't think about that when I started in blue, but man, did that end up being, uh... Kind of a, a good idea to play in Pokemon Blue. Uh, of course, we actually ended up, um, you know, looking ahead a bit. I ended up grinding for a lot more money, so I would have been able to pay the 9999 anyway, but... <sighs> well, now that the grind is done, it's time for another type of grind. It's time to go to the Safari Zone. We you know, kind of evolved a lot of Pokemon by grinding a lot. Now we need to do the second part, the very annoying part. And it is to catch um, the few Pokemons which are only available in the Safari Zone. And that's another whole beast. And by the way, I just, I cut footage here. It was not as easy. I did not go there and catch Dratini right away. I just, you know, it was, there was some trickery involved. And, um, yeah, I catch Need Arena, which, you know, is very convenient. Uh, but the thing is... There are three Pokémons we need to catch. Uh, four, actually. Because we were still missing Dratini, right? We had two Dratinis, we needed the third one. The Dratini will keep as a Dratini for a living Pokédex. Um, but after that, there are three other Pokémons that are only available in the Safari Zone. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna spend a lot of time in the Safari Zone as well. Uh, that part was also extremely, extremely, extremely grindy. I didn't do the save trick where you save, and then if you don't catch any Pokémon, you kind of reload your save so you don't spend the money. The three Pokémons we need are Pinsir, uh, Kangaskhan, and Tauros. And, oh, look at that! I caught him! No, believe me, it wasn't that quickly. Although Pinsir... As you can see here, the reason I kept this is to show you, you know, the money I spent. So yeah, I don't have any money anymore. I spent a lot of time running back and forth here. Uh, the thing is that all three of these Pokémon are available at most at a 4% encounter rate, which is stupidly low. But then even if you encounter one, uh, they have a very, very low catch rate. And there's some weirdness with the, the way uh, catch rates work in... Uh, red and blue, where it's glitched a little bit, and the Safari Balls suck. Like, it, I think it's like a 6.5, 6.7% chance to catch any of these Pokémon if you just throw a Safari Ball. So 4% and then 6.7%? We'll say 7%. That's still not great. And uh, basically, I spent an entire evening grinding the Safari Zone, listening to the evolution music here, like that background music driving me mad. I spent an entire evening and I just caught a pincer. Oh, well, uh, the Dratini and the pincer. And after that, I came back the next morning, ready to go, and uh, I got, as you saw, I got like, in, in that one patch of grass, I got the luck pincer. I didn't catch it, but I had a lucky pincer and it was like, okay, okay, this might be the run. And as you can see here, I spent close to three hours grinding. Um... And in that same run, morning run, you know, after an evening of terribleness, of seeing a lot of Tauruses and Kangaskhans, not being able to catch any of them, I saw the Luck Pincer, caught the Tauros, caught the Kangaskhan. That was the run. That was it. That was uh, several hours spent just running like an idiot, back and forth and back and forth. It was the dumbest part. 
But at that point, uh, I, I saved to show you, you know, it was in the same run and all, all the time I spent grinding. Um, I, oh, well, the music's not done. Now we actually have to evolve Pokemon. But yeah, like, that's the two big parts done. The big grindy part, which, you know, gr I grinded for a bunch of time, and then the Safari part. Um, and as you saw, we evolved. Uh, we evolved. We evolved. Uh, Nidorina into Nidoqueen. And after that, we now start the actual game part, the gameplay part, the part where we can actually, you know, catch Pokemon as part of our living Pokedex. We go to Cerulean Cave with uh, Big Slam, which is now level 84. The problem here is uh, he's too high level and destroys any other Pokemon. I forgot it's Gen 1, so, you know, he's only electric type. So, I just destroyed him. And, uh, see, Raidon I was able to, to paralyze and then catch. But the thing is, catching Pokemon is gonna start to get serious here, because there are a lot of evolved Pokemon, a lot of, you know, unique Pokemons available only in Celadon Cave. Um... Uh, Cerulean, not Celadon Cave, Cerulean Cave, sorry. And, uh, but yeah. I show I showed you this. I wanted to show you this to show you, yeah, things are not. It's still a hassle to catch Pokemon because we don't have any sleep. We have paralysis, but we need to hit Body Slam, and that's not even a hundred percent chance. Yeah, it's um. At that point, you know, I'm gonna try and use Strength. Maybe he won't die. Ah, uh, no, that was a crit. Yeah, catching Pokemon is not great. We need. We need a Pokemon with the purpose of catching Pokemon. Also, I forgot to remove the XP all, so now if I defeat a Pokemon, it takes forever. So things are not looking great, but we're still catching a few Pokemon. We have a Kadabra now, and we are able to catch a Dodrio. It turns out if I don't crit my strength, Dodrio doesn't go down in one hit. But now... As we make progress, um, I'm not grinding for any specific Pokemon yet, I'm just going through the cave and try and catch Mewtwo. I encounter Parasect. What Parasect has is a very special move. I try to catch it immediately because I know if I don't catch it immediately, he will use this specific move. Spore. Spore is a Paras, uh, Paras and Parasect specific move which has a 100% chance to hit and 100% chance to make the opposing Pokémon go to sleep. If you remember, sleeping is, along with Frozen, the best um, uh, the, the best uh, alteration. Um, the, the best attack to increase your chance to catch the Pokémon. So the first thing I do, I run away Go to the Pokemon Center, and now, now with Parasect in our team, things are about to get stupid. See, we have a level 52 Parasect now. It's Parasect with Spore. We can now make Pokemons fall asleep really quickly. We have a high level Parasect, so it's likely uh, it will attack first. And then I can just use Spore right away. Magneton, round two. Well, th this time we didn't go first, but Magneton is now asleep. And now... With Parasect uh, as part of our team, like I said, things are about to get crazy. We're about to kick this living Pokedex into overdrive. See the difference between using the Ultra Ball and the Super and the Great Ball, rather. Yeah. L look at the top here. Sleep. Full health. Great Ball. Sand Slash. No problem. Let's go. With Parasect, as soon as I got Parasect, things were done. And as you can see here. No problem. Well, actually, a little bit of a problem, as you can see here. I'm using a Hypno. It's because my Parasect got destroyed by Kadabra. But, you know, I have items. Revive. Golbat? No problem. See? Soon as we got Parasect, bam, 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 left and right. Chansey? What's the problem? And that's the thing, yeah. We, you want to get a Parasect as soon as possible. And that's why we went there first, because I knew Parasect was here. And I knew I could catch one with Spore, and luckily enough, it happened early enough that I was able to go through the entire cave. 
I was not grinding. Again, I was not grinding. I was just going through the game, trying to get Mewtwo. And at that point, we have Mewtwo, which says Mew. Um, and also, you know, the sprite looks like any other Pokemon. You know, that's, that's Gen 1, I guess. You know, it's really old. The sprites... Kind of not great. The funny thing is that Mewtwo doesn't have a lot of uh, damaging moves. So catching Mewtwo, not super hard. Um, if you remember when I explained how the the catch chains worked and, and the knowledge required, uh, you remember that the best way to catch a rare Pokemon like this is to use sleep and then Ultra Balls. There's no need to lower the health. Well, we could, but the increase would be very, very marginal the uh, catch chance increase. And uh, now we have Mewtwo. And at that point, we've uh, gone through the entire cave, getting to Mewtwo, and we've caught all the Pokemons we wanted. So that's great. And uh, that's gonna be kind of our path now, is uh, we're gonna go to one place, catch every Pokemon there, move on to the next place, place catch a lot of other Pokemons there. And... Um, the thing is, in the in the Cerulean Cave, you can catch uh, a specific Pokemon, which I didn't catch. So now what I'm going to have to do is catch its unevolved uh, version and evolve it using a Moonstone. No, what that what is that Pokemon, you may ask? The Pokemon is this little guy here. This jerk. This jerk. It may look like, oh, you're going to Route 3, I think. If I remember correctly, this is Route 3. It's easy, there are only three Pokemons. And Jigglypuff has a 10% chance, right? Yep. That guy probably took me... As long as it took me to do Cerulean Cave to appear. Is how stupid this Jigglypuff was. It, it was dumb. I, sometimes you hit those Pokemons where you, you kind of don't understand why they're so rare. Um... But yeah, we could have caught a Wigglytuff in Cerulean Cave. We didn't. But that's why we, after Cerulean Cave, if we don't have it, we go to Route 3, and it was an easy 10% chance, right? What could happen? <sighs> yeah, the, it was ridiculous how long it took me. I was, I was flabbergasted. I really was. Moving forward, uh, we go back to one of my least favorite parts of the game. Uh, the Pokemon Tower. Because we're missing one Pokemon from the Pokemon Tower, we're actually missing um, two versions of that Pokemon. Two Hunters. And uh, the thing is, you see me, we could catch Hunters, I think, in every floor. Oh, wait, what? Oh! Oh, okay, you need the Silph Scope for every Pokemon. I thought it was just for the event. I thought it was just for the event, not just every po- oh man. Anyway, I went back, got my self-scope, and then caught my two hunters. Um, the thing is, we go to the last floor, right, floor 7, because it is where you're more likely to catch hunter. And if I ca catch one on the way, great. But, you know, I bought a bunch of escape ropes just for that, uh, that purpose. And that's the thing about uh, the cleanup is that sometimes we'll go to places where we, where we have a bunch of Pokemons. And then sometimes we'll go to places where we only have a few Pokemons left. And that's the thing. We were lucky um, at times and lucky at other times. And it's that's where the planning works out. So now we have four Pokemons. The four trading Pokemons. I'm not going to show you the trades, but... Bam! We now have four more Pokemons. Uh, yeah, I'm not showing you that. It's just me trading back and forth Pokemon. It's kind of boring. But with Hunters, we now had all four Pokemons we needed to trade. So I did that part. Um, might might actually have taken me less time than catching the Jigglypuff. Anyway, at that point, um, we're going to use Abra. Uh, we're going to get Abra, but I'm not... We already have an Abra, and already have the entire Alakazam um, evolution. So why would I use Abra? Well, I'm just going to put him in the box. We'll go back to Abra. Now we go to uh, the uh, cycling road. I, f I forget the, the number of the road, but that's where, you know, you have to have your bicycle. And we're going to catch a Fero. And as you can see, Parasect, 
pretty damn good. Every Pokemon, you can check the top left. Every Pokemon I catch from now on, now on is going to be asleep. And that's where Parasect, I, I kind of wanted to rename Parasect. Now that I think about it, I'm, I should have renamed Parasect. Because he is kind of our, our big catcher, right? He's going to be the Pokemon we use from now till the end. Till we're done with the, the, the Pokedex, the living Pokedex. It's the Pokemon we'll use to catch every single Pokemon because it's just free, right? We just use sleep and now pretty much we, we, we just have like such a higher chance to catch Pokemon because the way um, Gen 1 works, sleeping is just really stupid. It, it's a flat increase. It's a flat chance in, uh, increased chance. And with using Great Balls, Bam! And, you know, that's also a part where planning works out great, because as you saw here, I caught a bunch of Pokémons, then went to fish there, and caught a few other Pokémons. The thing is, I needed the Magikarp here, because the Magikarp here is level 15. Uh, most places, you can catch Magikarps anywhere, but they're only level 5. And you have to use Magikarp to... Um, you have to evolve Magikarp by... Experience so the highest level Magikarp we can catch the better we are now after that we're gonna go here again We did not get the Pidgeotto right away um, I just you know it was a little bit of a trickery you know editing trickery uh, But the thing is There's the the Pokemon's we have to evolve through leveling up We actually try and catch them the highest level they can be found I think we could have found a level 32 Pidgeotto here but I stayed for a while, and I, I couldn't even get a normal Pidgeotto. Uh, also important to note that Tangela can be obtained via trading, but I decided that if a Pokémon is available via trading, you know, in-game trades, and available via catch, I will always go for the catchable one, because... Well, then I can rename it, and also, I, I don't know. It, I just want to catch Pokémon. The goal of this whole thing is to catch Pokémon. I want to catch Pokémon, I mean, come on. Uh, now another part of the cleanup process is gonna is going back to old areas, and yeah, believe it or not, yeah, even Caterpie, I will make that level three Caterpie sleep, hundred percent chance to catch. I mean, it doesn't take any more time, but yeah, we go back to uh, to uh, Viridian Forest because we never caught. Um, the, the, the Caterpie, Metapod, well, we, got it. we catch a second Metapod, but we, we'll make that Metapod evolve later. And that's basically what I'm doing right now, is I'm catching a lot of Pokemon. You may have noticed I'm catching a lot of Pokemon, which requires to be uh, leveled up, right? To evolve via level up. And the reason for that is I'm actually running low on cash and low on balls at that point, because we've caught a lot of Pokemon. See, we, we spend quite a bit amount of time, uh, but... Our, our Pokedex is growing rather large, and at that point, I needed more Pokeballs, so I needed cash, so at that point, if I need cash, might as well go catch Pokemons that require level up evolution, and give them XP while getting cash. And that's why the Elite Four is, um, is uh, real good. It's the best for that. It gives you a lot of money you can use. Uh, I also ended up near the end of the game. I, I didn't show you. Uh, I didn't show the footage, but uh, Butterfree. I forgot the name. It was Butterfree. Um, but the thing is, uh, at the end, I, I ended up having extra cash that I used on um, items that boost your stats. Uh, the thing I wanted to show you here is um, I, I, the actual going through the Elite Four is kind of mindless, but Version 1, um, Generation 1 being Generation 1, there's a lot of stupid things. One of the first things is, uh, during the last fights, even if you have animations, you know, battle animations turned off, they get automatically turned on, so I'll, whenever I start back my save file, I have to turn them back off, which I forgot a few times because it's supposed to be all mindless. Uh, also, there's the whole XP part, where, like, every Pokémon has... XP, so at the end of every, every time any Pokemon gets um, uh, defeated, you have to wait f for forever to get all the XP, which is super inconvenient. 
That's also the part we don't start at the Elite Four. We actually start uh, at uh, Pallet Town. So we have to go back and, and stuff. And also, because of that, we need to get all our Pokemon. We need to get our Flareo, our Aerodactyl. I don't need the XP on my Aerodactyl, so I need to put it in the, in the PC and then go and get it back. And also, my Pokemon don't get healed. So I need to heal them every time I do the Elite Four. Yeah, it's it's super inconvenient. Gen 1 and Elite Four grinding is incredibly inconvenient. <sighs> the mindless part, you know, the grindy part is actually not that bad, but every single small thing that makes it more inconvenient <sighs> is just annoying. Anyway, remember um, the previous... Uh, video where we got two um, two Pokemons, we caught two plant Pokemons, we gave them two rare candies and then one um, grass stone and we, we had, uh, I forget the name of the Pokemon, but it was two Glooms, we ended up with two Glooms and, uh, and Glooms Evolution, I forget the names of Pokemons right now. There's so many, so many. But yeah, we can't do that here because we don't have two rare candies. Well, we do have two rare candies, but we're gonna need the, them on one very specific Pokemon. Also, I catch two tentacles. One of those tentacles was higher level, uh, was very high level. And the reason for that, you know, I was waiting for a, a high level tentacle, actually, which is why I didn't catch tentacle before, because we need to evolve tentacle into tentacruel. So if that tentacle is higher level than the tentacruel, um, it only needs one level to, evol uh, to level up. Uh, again, we could be using our rare candy, but we need to keep those. Anyway, now we go to Seafoam Islands. And Seafoam Islands is another one of these places where we're gonna catch a lot, a lot of Pokémon. Parasect is gonna have so much fun with his spores, catching a bunch of Pokémon, some will have to evolve. Um, Seal, for example, is one Pokemon where I want a high-level seal, because we're going to need to level up um, a seal to um, to a specific level. I forget the level. I forget a lot of things right now. My brain has been just mushed, rendered to mush, because there were so many Pokemons I needed to keep track of, and there are different ways to evolve all that stuff. Again, I don't need to think of all that stuff, and that's why we have the plan. And that's the amazing part, is having all the plan, having the, the guide I made. Uh, even if my brain is turned to mush, even if I don't remember what Pokemons I need, the guide tells me. I just follow the guide. And using that guide, we're able to get Articuno. Uh, one thing I was surprised replaying the game is I thought the dungeons were going to be, you know, the dungeons, quote-unquote, right? The caves, the, the buildings, all that stuff. Uh, were going to be worse than they were, but they actually weren't. They actually pretty straightforward, and it was helped by the fact that most random encounters we got, we actually, you know, it was Pokemon we actually wanted to catch. So, as you saw at that point, by the point we got to Articuno, we weren't even done with Seafoam Islands. Um, so, I'm still gonna be grinding in Seafoam Islands, but basically I got to the end of Seafoam Islands, caught the Articuno, without even being done with Seafoam Islands. Is It shows you how small and how straightforward those are and how catching a bunch of Pokemons on the way make those uh, caves a lot more fun, actually. A lot more enjoyable. And uh, we catch a bunch of these. And with that Psyduck, we're done. So we'll use our last escape rope. Don't worry, I, I buy some more. We're not even close to being done. And uh, yeah, I actually bought a bunch of stones beforehand. And we're going to use some of them, evolving Staryu. Um, Cinnabar Island is a great place to catch Pokemon because in the waters around, uh, there's the tentacles we needed. There's Seafoam Islands nearby, but we can also fish. Because I forgot, I never actually caught uh, Magikarp. So I'm, I'm going to catch Magikarp. Before, we're actually going to use our Super Rod to catch not a Magikarp, but this dude. Horsey. I totally knew it was Horsey. Did not forget its name was or Horsey. I totally did forget its name was Horsey. It, my, my brain has been ran into mush. It's really bad. 
Magikarp, I remember! Old Rod! Well, I got my Old Rod, and now we're gonna catch level 5 Magikarp. Because that one we're not gonna need to evolve, so... It doesn't really matter. But we're not even done with Cinnabar Island. Because we still have the Pokémon Mansion, that's right! This place is amazing! For... Catching a bunch, 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 bunch of different Pokémons. Um... I could even be fishing in Seafoam Island, but um, there's better places. There's more convenient places with a bunch of uh, Pokemons we don't have yet. So I didn't fish in Seafoam Islands. Um, the thing also that's kind of fun is that there's a bunch of places. Oh, Vulpix! Yeah, I, I don't. I was not planning on getting a Vulpix here, but we got a Vulpix, and that's why I bought the stones beforehand because at that point we can evolve it on the spot. The thing is, um, I also noticed there's places, kind of different places in the game. I never actually looked at it this way, but it's definitely typed, right? There's uh, Cerulean Cave, which is just a bunch of different evolved Pokémon. But then we have Seafoam Islands with just the water Pokémons. Then we have uh, Dimension with all the fire Pokémons. We have the cave, right? Victory Road with a bunch of rock and fighting Pokémons. Um, and so that's why, you know, we spend some time in, in some specific place catching a bunch of Pokemons, and then we do cleanup everywhere else. And speaking of cleanup, we actually need a Meowth. Level 20 Meowth is good, because we're gonna need to uh, level them up. The thing is, you can see how many Pokemons I need to level up through, ev through level up, just by looking at the discrepancy between the Pokémons I own and the Pokémons that are part of my living Pokédex. Thankfully, we actually did the big part, the, the big annoying part of uh, grinding, right? The really lengthy part early on, right? That's why I started with. Oh, by the way, when you fish, um, yeah, a lot of the times, not even a nibble. I wanted to show you this because I edit a bunch of these and it looks like, oh, it's easy, it works always, all the time, bam, you get in there, get all the Pokémon you want, no. No. But, that's, this place I really like, because it really shows the knowledge, and where knowledge is so important. We use a good, ro a good rod to catch a Poliwag. Then, we use a Super Rod. See, we now are using a Super Rod, and we're gonna catch not one, not two, but three of these guys. Three Poliwhirl. Now, why do we need three Poliwhirls? Well, we need one for Poliwhirl. We need one to give it uh, a Water Stone to evolve it. And we need the third one for the same reason we got an Abra and, I don't know if you noticed, an Extra Spearow at some point. We caught a Fero and then we caught an Extra Spearow. We already had a Spearow. Well, we have a few. I'll show you. Anyway, we can now use the Water Stone on Poliwhirl. Ooh, scary. Scary spooky. Poliwrath. Well, that sprite certainly shows us he's angry. And uh, now we're close by, you know, oh, Almost as if it was planned, we can now go to the abandoned power plant, and this place is going to be our electric Pokemon place. Thankfully, we have our good old body, the Parasect, and we're gonna catch a bunch of Pokemons. Again, I remember the abandoned power plant being hellish. Uh, when I went through, it's just one floor, and on my way to the end, I just caught every Pokemon we wanted. We got Raichu, which means the actually actually bought a Thunderstone. I'm not gonna need to use it, because we caught the Raichu. Pikachu, Magnemite. And at that point, we're done. As you can see, things are going pretty quickly. Ever since we caught our Parasect, catching Pokemon has been incredibly quick. It was just a question of knowing where to go and what to do, and that's where being efficient and deciding on the path beforehand and having have that um, 
that reflection, right, that planning stage was so important because we're, we're, just, we're just going place catching, place catching, place catch, catching, 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 go another place catch, go another place catch. It was so, so efficient. And that's, that was super fun. Zapdos was actually the only legendary bird that actually gave me trouble, which I actually lost my team and had to go back and, and load my save file. It was the only one. But anyway, we're not done with all the electric Pokemons. And we're getting really close. If you look at our own Pokemon, 142. We're getting really close to the uh, cleanup cleanup. And the thing is, we actually have visited every place where we've caught every legendary Pokemon. We visited every place, you know, every cave, every, every building we needed to. Now we're gonna actually do the cleanup. We're getting very, very close to the end now. And that's why we're going to catch a Shelter. Two, actually. And you know why that is. That's right. But never forget to use Spore. And yeah, that's the thing is Great Balls are kind of cheap, but they're not, you know, the cheapest. Um, and we don't want to do... Uh, at that point, I want to be done with the catching Pokemon part before I go back to the grinding part. So... If we can, since we always go first, because our Parasect level 52, since we always go first, might as well use Spore even on low level Pokemons, because it's not 100%. See, even with the Spore, uh, it was not 100% catch chance. Oh, we're getting really close right now. And, oh, right next to this place, there's two Pokemons we need. One of them being uh, Sandshrew. Because we're lucky enough to catch the evolved version in Cerulean Cave. We only need one Sandshrew. And we're going to need a Drowsy. It's kind of weird how we caught uh, a lot of the evolved versions before. But that's the thing. Knowing if we caught them or not. Um, we're able to determine if we need to catch two of the lower level ones. And need to level them up or something. Because definitely there's certainly Pokemons. You know that are low level. For example Meowth evolves at level 28. That's not a lot, of gr a lot of grinding, you know. If I can avoid it, I'll avoid it, but if I have to do it, it's like... Um, in one of the previous uh, playthroughs, I actually wanted to catch an Arbok, but I was not able to. But it was not a big deal, because Arbok evolves at level 28 as well, so it was fine. Um, it's the kind of thing, that's why also general game knowledge, although... You saw my game knowledge can be really limited when it's it goes outside the part that are planned beforehand. Uh, but general game knowledge speeds up the process a lot. And here we can catch Seedra. This time I didn't use Spore. Um, I forget why. But uh, Parasect is actually not that powerful a Pokemon. That's what uh, helped us here. Here in Victory Road, right before Victory Road, is where we'll catch our last few Pokemon. We're gonna catch uh, Seedra, Sea King, Slowbro. We're actually gonna, get, gonna catch two Slowbros for the same reason. We get the Abra, we get the the Fero, and what was it? What was the third one? Uh, I forget the third one. But anyway, we catch a Slowbro because we need it, uh, we need it as well, and. Once we're done with that, conveniently, right next to us, in this uh, this patch of grass, there's the last Pokemon we need. If you saw the counter, if you look at the counter on the right, we now have 150 Pokemon. A living Pokedex is far from being done. But ditto. Ditto is the last Pokemon. And, y and at that point, Parasect will have done its job. Its amazing job. Parasect being... Definitely one of the MVPs. Bam! With that, we have caught every single Pokemon we need to catch. No more balls. No more... Well, I, I I don't think... I think I've used all my stones. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We've done most of the work. Right. And that's the thing. Um, It, re it really shows... I'm really... I I'm gonna say what I said again, but... The planning was so good. Just not having to think, and you go to one place, and oh, 
here's all the Pokemons you need, and you go to another place, oh, here's the Pokemon you need. Incredibly convenient. I, I, I really, really absolutely recommend you plan and you follow the plan and you can get your living decks. And it, it, almost, it almost looks easy. You know, almost. The, the only thing that's difficult is the, the grind because that part actually takes quite a bit. I, I removed a lot of it. Oh, but, oh, yeah, oh, we have 139 Pokemons. Might as well get HM05, right? I forgot about that one. It's Flash, by the way. Anyway. Uh, the four Pokemons we have right now, we're actually going to use the trade. That's right. There's four Pokemons which are only available via in-game trades. We're going to get Abra for uh, Mr. Mime. Now, I'll show you this trade. Well, I I'm not going to show you the entire trade. That's the thing. Trades are pretty lengthy, so... I'm gonna show you the first one, and then I'll, I'll skip the, the ones after that. But uh, four seems to be the uh, magic numbers, because, you know, you need four Pokémons via in-game trades, well, via NPC trade. Uh, we have four Pokémons via, you know, real trade. Uh, we have, you know, we have the, the four... Um... Uh... Evolutions. Well, actually, there are three. But like from the Eevee, there's four of these. There's the Ammonite. Um, anyway, there's four seems to be their good um, number of Pokemons to show a different way to evolve Pokemon. I didn't count how many Pokemons were required to evolve via stones, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was four per stone. Um, and that's really cool. I really like it. And one thing I didn't touch on is... Um, I really like that there's a bunch of different ways to catch all these Pokemons. We don't literally have to catch all of them. There's some of them we have to catch in place in some places. There are some of them that are available all over the world, but there's also, you know, the unique legendary Pokemons. There's Pokemons we trade like this. There's Pokemon we trade with other people. Like, there's a, a bunch of different ways to catch all these Pokemons. Even if, you know, the end result is still the same, just the fact that we have to buy Porygon adds a little extra layer to the game. You know, we can play the game a different way. The fact that there's a Safari Zone where we can um, we can only catch Pokemons. It's just raw luck, right? It is just luck, but it's an extra um, different way to play the game that mix things up a bit. And that's the thing that even in Gen 1, you know, worked really well and was pretty fantastic, pretty well made, even at the time. And that's... There's a reason why this franchise became the behemoth it is now. It's even for all its shortcomings. And believe me, as someone who had to manage all the boxes, because that's something I never showed you, is the box management. Every time I go back to the Pokemon Center and manage the boxes, which is something I'm going to do right now. Um, it, it's not super convenient. There's a bunch of inconvenient parts, right? The, the item box even existing, the fact that our items are not unlimited. We need to store some items and get them back. You know, all those inconveniences. The grinding the Elite Four and like, oh, you get teleported back to Pallet Town. It's not great. All these inconveniences are not... They're, they're not... They're nothing compared to how fun it was to do that challenge. And that's really... If I could encourage you to do that challenge, you really should. It's super fun. I, I feel like I appreciate uh, the Pokemon, Pokemon Red and Blue a lot more now. And, um, now, what was going on while I was telling you that Pokemon's good, big shocker, uh, is that I finished my three trades, and, uh, four trades, rather, and now we are going for the last bit of grind, the very last one. We get Weeping Bell, get both our Weeping Bells, we're gonna use a, oh, yeah, we, we were missing one Stone Evolution. But, uh, the thing is, there's one Pokemon that has stayed with us at all times. It's not Big Slam, it's not Arya, although Arya has leveled up quite a bit and I started using Arya. No, no, no. It's, remember that uh, cursed run, that cursed playthrough I had with the Dratini the that evolved? Yeah, it's still with us. It's, uh, it's still with us. That Dragonair. That Dragonair is still not evolved, and believe it or not, he has been with us as part of our team the entire time. 
the entire time. Every time we went back to the Elite Four and wanted to grind, it was there. Getting Dragonite is stupid. It's ridiculous. It is so dumb to level up that Pokemon. <sighs> but at that point, we have Arya level 63. That's right. 63. I even bought Ice Beam, which is a TM you can buy. And uh, yeah, at that point, I, I kind of my my, uh, my run kind of became a kind of hybrid between you know using Big Slam and using Arya. Again, there's no reason my playthroughs would have uh, my playthrough would have been better. My uh, Dragon uh, Dragonair would have evolved faster if I didn't have Arya in my team. But I, I just wanted a, a Vaporeon. What can I say? I, I love Vaporeon. I wanted to use Vaporeon for fun. I, I love Vaporeon, and I wanted to have the big Vaporeon that would defeat the Elite Four on its own. Uh, and unfortunately, it di it didn't quite happen, because uh, well, I would have needed to grind a lot more. And this Alakazam, even even if Vaporeon is good special Pokemon, as you can see here, um, has good special and good HP, as you can see here. Yeah, level 64 even. And Dragonair, still not leveling up. That Dragonair, at that point we have three Pokemons, Big Slam, Aryo, and Dragonair. That's how dumb things have become. But wait, you may be asking, if the only Pokemons you have left is Dragonair into Dragonite, why is the living Pokedex saying 100, 148? It should be saying 150, plus Dragonite is 151, right? Uh, yes, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I, I miscounted somewhere. Um, I, I don't know where, I, you know? Um, and it, it doesn't matter. I got the owned Pokemon right, though, so I didn't miss any... any Pokemon being caught. I just... I, I don't know, man. I wanted to keep track of the... <laughs> of how many Pokedex were in the living Pokedex. More for fun. So, you know, you're only realizing at the end that the counter was not good. It's fine. It's okay. I, I probably... I don't know if I missed two there in this video or two in the previous video or one in the previous video and one in this video. I wouldn't be surprised if I missed two in this video because my brain was turned to complete, complete paste after this. But here we have 53. Level 53 Dragonair. We're two levels away. Two levels away from victory from completing the Living Pokedex. And uh, funny thing, I actually ended up using Dragonair for some fighting as well, because, you know, Dragonair has uh, good moves. Its stats are not that great, so at that point I switched back to uh, to Big Slam. Just, just get it done. And yeah, our Big Slam, here's how long was the grind. Big Slam is level 98. 98. And that's counting the times, you know, most of the time it was the first one on the team, so it gets at least 50% of the XP, but uh, as I went along, it was not actually first. Right. Still. At that point, oh, oh, you know, you, you can use your best plant technique. I'm probably maxed out on EVs. It's just, it's just done. It is a done deal. Big Slam, level 98, and we have... And, uh, yeah, as you can see, every time you defeat a Pokemon, shows that stuff. It is. It drives me nuts. But anyway, yeah. We're done, right? But we still have two levels to go. Well, no, we don't. Because we have two rare candies. 30 hours, 12 minutes. Only for this run, though. It doesn't count the time I spent in the previous uh, versions. But, again, remember, we need to use Bicycle and go to the place. Rare candy... Dragonair, 54. And... 55. And at level 55, Dragonair... Uh, tries to learn Hyper Beam. I, I, sure, Hyper Beam is good. Replay Slam, that's, I don't care. Just move on. What do, you, what do we want? Yeah, Hyper Beam, whatever. Oh! Dragonair is evolving. And with Dragonair evolving... Into Dragonite... And my living Pokedex magically... Oh! 
going into 151. We are now done. We are now 100% done with our living Pokedex challenge. And after one last, um, you know, ordering of the boxes, I can show you every single Pokemon. Some of them you'll see they're named. They're named. Big Slam is named, but I put them all in order, which, uh, by the way, was kind of difficult. Um, you can't... I don't think you can switch them up. I never tried to use select. Oh, no. Oh, maybe just using select, I could have changed it. Because what I did is I withdrew all of them and then deposited them in order. I went through every box and did that. Thankfully, there's only eight boxes. Which is also something I did uh, in my guide, as part of my guide, is um, show me, you know, the the, num the name of the boxes. Like, okay, that Pokemon is box one, that Pokemon's box three, that Pokemon's box uh, four. Um, because I didn't show you, but yeah, a lot of box management. And every time you change boxes and you have to do this and you have to redraw and... <sighs> yeah, it, it's one of the things that are very inconvenient in Gen 1. But as you can see, yeah, I got every Pokemon I'm showing you. We didn't just complete the Pokedex. That would be easy. Whatever. No, we got, you know, Ducks again. You know, that one is far-fetched. Um, there, there's some that are named because they're the ones that I've traded. Um, when we'll get to Arya, uh, Arya, or Vaporeon, should I say, is not... I think it was Box 6, right? Uh, is not in the box because I decided it's going to be my Pokemon, my sidekick. So I'm going to keep um, Arya with me. So it is not this box, it is box 7. But you know, you have to keep one Pokemon with you, so I'll do that. Well actually, I ended up, after showing you all of this, I ended up taking, you know, Marcel and Lola, you know, the, those Pokemons that are traded. Um, I ended up taking, yeah, see, Jolteon, Flareon, and yeah, there's nothing between Eevee and Jolteon. There should be Vaporeon, but I have it. You know I have it. You saw it. Uh, I ended up taking um, uh, Aerodactyl with me. Because uh, that's the one with Fly. You can't teach Fly to Vaporeon, so I just took Aerodactyl. But with that, every single Pokemon, Mewtwo and Mew, level 70 and 7, we have caught every single Pokemon in Pokemon Red and Blue in Gen 1. Uh, it took us more than 30 hours and 21 minutes, but we did it. And now we can go back to the guy who started them all, the old man, the professor. And uh, what does he say to us? Professor Oak says, congratulations, and that we have a small jingle. And that's it. He doesn't even give us the last Pokemon. Dude, I don't need it. I have 151 Pokemon. I don't care. I'm, st I'm still a little bit disappointed. Well. If we don't if we don't get recognition from Professor Oak, we're going to get recognition from the developers themselves. That's right. If we go to Celadon, Man Celadon Mansion... Celadon Mansion... And uh, we go up. We will find this floor is oh, Games Freak meeting room. All right, why is there a bed in the meeting room? Well, knowing game development, I'm actually not surprised. Anyway, we now have oh, that is Game Freak's development room, and we can talk to the director of Pokemon Red and Blue which congratulates us and gives us our diploma. Game Freak signing this diploma of us finishing Pokemon Red and Blue, having caught every single Pokemon. He actually gives us that even if we don't have all the Pokemon, we don't need to have a living dex, but we know we have completed together the living Pokedex challenge in Gen 1. Well... If, if you think, well, I've not completed anything, you have completed uh, Living Dex that didn't do anything, well, you can change that. Because the website I used with the guide, with the Pokedex tracker, with, you know, all the Pokemon location data, is online. That's right. I put the description, uh, in the description, 
the address of that website and you can go there and go get your own living Pokedex in Pokemon Gen 1. That's right, you have no reason not to do it. It takes a long time, which is, I guess, one of the reasons you wouldn't want to do it. But I recommend you do it. It's really fun and uh, it, felt really, it felt really satisfying. And uh, I hope, I hope you enjoyed the series very much. Tell me if you'd like to see videos similar and uh, if you'd like to see me go for challenges in other games or maybe try and get a living Pokedex challenge in another Pokemon game. Anyway, I hope you had a lot of fun. I know I did, apart from, you know, that run. But I, I still, I still had a lot of fun. Take care.